Thanks for staying with us. Now, the Attorney General of the Federation Justice, Abubakar Malami, SAN, has stated that the dissolving of elected local government councils by some state governors is unconstitutional, null and void. He said this while asking the governor of Oyo State, Shoyi Makinde, to reverse the disbanding of the local government council in Oyo State and also to disperse all Kataka committee. Joining us to discuss this still with me in the studio is Evans Ufeli, legal practitioner, and Zil Akaraiwe, political analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for staying with us still. Now, barely two months, um, this, the, the, the committees, the Kataka committee were, was set up. When this disbandment happened, what, what was your thought on it? What's your reaction to it? I, I, my first reaction was to spot out the legality or illegality of it. It was a government that um, you have in place as a result of uh, the people's mandate. Okay? So when you have that kind of arrangement and a governor comes to dissolve it, is for me, I see it as as treason because it is illegal. This is they, 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 they are not there on their own volition. They were voted by the people to represent them. Do they have a government? How be it at the local level, the grassroots? So they should. They can only be removed through a constitutional means. Okay. But in this case, you have a governor. Uh, the, the local government is supposed to be a tier of its own if we are serious with our, our kind of federal structure. Yes. Okay, so the that, governor that's have a no right. Of, uh, well, that's a third tier of government. Yes, yes. so the federal, governor, state, and local government. Yeah, the governor yes. have no right to dissolve it because they, 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 they operate on the mandate of the people. What's the legality of this? Well, it, it, it's unconstitutional. Okay. It's unconstitutional because the law provides that the, the, the constitution provides for. Section 7 provides for the existence of the local government. Okay. Zil, your, your thoughts on this, please? I mean, we, we, this has happened almost all throughout democracy. And because all your state is not the first or your state is such not the first. incident. It's, yes. it's, it's just blatant impunity. This is the equivalent of the federal government is headed at the, the, first, the, fed, the tier of government at the federal level is headed by the president, yes. at the state level headed by the state governors, government. at the local government level headed by the elected officials of the local government. So a, go a governor removing elected officials that in the third tier is the equivalent of a president saying, I'm dissolving the state governors. I've removed all the state governors you put in and I'm appointing. By definition, that's a coup. Mm -hmm. It's not a military coup, but it's still a coup. The moment you remove by force elected officials, you've, that's a coup. And if you've done, if you, you've executed a coup, that's treason. So I don't understand what gives governors that are highly respected and supposedly learned the thought or the idea that they can step into office, look at. They may not agree with the electoral process that put them in there, mm -hmm. but if you don't, you go to court. Almost all our state governors, one way or the other, get confirmed by court. Yes. If I don't like how you were put in, I cannot say get out. What you do is go to court. If the governor had an issue with the process that got those people in, he should get redressed in court. Okay. But you cannot disband elected officials. It's just not done. Now, let's put on the AGF a bit on this issue. This, this, this matter is in court as it is. And so the AGF speaking up and calling on uh, Mackin Day to reverse um, the dissolution you're a legal person. What, what's, the, what's the implication of that? The matter is in court. The AGF is both court and everything these days. He has a whole lot he's speaking out on. I, I think he should restrain himself because if a matter is in court, it's sub uh, The court cannot be legislate. The court cannot be advocating or looking into a matter in one hand why the Attorney General of the Federation will be making pronouncement on the same matter. So it means that the Attorney, General, the Attorney General of the Federation is sitting on the matter while the matter is in court. Yes. So I think that the Attorney General should, should uh, focus proper advice. Perhaps he should use all this energy to advise the President to be obeying court order. <laughs> because, you know, I think his priorities are not right. He, 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 he believes that he can make orders, make pronouncements. He's not the president of. He have no, he has no such powers. It is only the court that have the power to decide who should reverse what, when, and how. And not the Attorney General of the Federation. He's the chief uh, law officer of the state. 
he, his duty is to advise, okay, to give legal advice and legal opinion to the state for the state to function better and not to sit on matters that are already in court that are sub -judice. So it simply means that until a court of competent jurisprudence passes um, a judgment on this matter, the AGF is meant to be quiet on it. Is that what you're saying? Of course, because uh, the, he is not the court. He is a law officer of the state. Okay, so he will allow for um, the court to look into the matter, interpret the constitution and the relevant laws to that effect, and then come up with a judgment. And if uh, if parties are not satisfied with the judgment, they can appeal until they get to the Supreme Court. But well, it, it does not lie in its mouth to begin to, you know, tell the state governor. Uh, what to do yeah. or what not Zio, to do. Zio, you, you have any thoughts? You have any thoughts on this? Um, I, I tend to agree. So I think what has happened is the, 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 the Attorney General of the Federation is a very powerful office. But I think our current AGF misunderstands that power. That power is not by pronouncement. You can't give orders. That power is based on a long history and of experience and knowledge. So when you are the Attorney General of the Federation, the assumption is you are really rooted in the laws of the Federation. And so anybody who you advise would know you are giving the advice from the position of strength of knowledge of the law, in which case, if your knowledge is tested in court, you will more than likely win. And so that's where the power of the Attorney General sits. When he says, what you've done, I don't think you should do it. It means he has some information, or rather has some knowledge, backed by law. And if you test that knowledge in court, he wins. That is where the power comes from. So if the Attorney General of the Federation understands that, he shouldn't be placing orders. He can't, doesn't have the power to order a governor, an elected official. Yes. He's an appointee. So what he should be telling them is, look, this is what the law says. If you don't agree, let's test it in court. And when you go to court against if an attorney general of a federation two, three, four times, and you lose consistently based on law, the next time he gives advice, you listen. So what he should do is get, first of all, get the courts as quickly as possible. I think, I don't know what the legal process is, but if you remove an elected official illegally, I think the courts can very, very quickly reinstate them and tell you whatever your grievance it is. It depends on the, uh, the reliefs. Yeah, maybe, maybe we can talk on the extant okay. judicial um, decisions. What, what kind of decision can, can be taken? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, when you go to court uh, in a case like that, you will definitely come up with reliefs. You are asking the court to make certain orders. You are asking the court to make a declaration, reinstating. Uh, so, so the court will look at it vis-a-vis -vis the extant laws. Okay. And then uh, if the court agrees with your argument based on law, the court can reverse that uh, you know, dissolution. The court can reverse it. But I think that the Attorney General is stepping outside. Because if you look at section 174 of the 1999 Constitution, the, the, the Constitution gives the Attorney General the power to discontinue or take over criminal cases. I think he's, he's thinking that it covers both civil. And then he's spreading it across. He has no powers to interfere, take over, or discontinue, or make such pronouncement on civil cases. He can only do that in criminal cases. And that is what the former Attorney General Andwaka did in James Ibori's case when he said that he has no case to answer. And the country let him. And when he got to England, he was convicted on the same charges. Okay. Now, I know there's been, there's been called different calls from different sectors for the autonomy of local government. Um, and I'm wondering why it's still as it is, why the local government doesn't function as an autonomy. And don't you think that's part, part of the problem? If they can be given autonomy to function as, as a tier of government, their, their, their decisions are not independent of the state government under which they are. So let's for a moment talk about the autonomy of local government areas. Yeah, the autonomy, that was highly canvassed last year when the yeah. NIFU made uh, a, a pronouncement mm -hmm. that uh, the allocation of local government will be sent to the local government directly. Some states have uh, implemented that. I learned that uh, just today, uh, the new governor of Imo State, Opus Odima, have made that provision for 
for the local government to receive the allocation directly. But before now, what we had is the governors collecting the funds yeah. of the local government and putting their pocket. These local government uh, officials were elected by the people. Okay, they are supposed to be severed from the executive of the state, and they are supposed to function. They are supposed to have their own budgetary allocation, and then such budgetary allocation is supposed to be supervised. Okay, by the state, but we have the reverse here. The governors takes over everything. And then they go to the governor, cap, the chairman of local government areas, they go to the governor's cap in hand to ask for whatever it is. That is why you, you, you see that there's a lot of poverty at the, the rural, the local government level, a, a lot of deficiency mm. in terms of infrastructure at the local government level. And it's a problem for us. Yeah. Now, there, there seems to be a whole lot of disharmony between state and local government. Um, Zil, let, what's, your, what's your thought on this, and what can we do to, to correct to correct this situation as, as it's obtainable between state and local government, even at the federal the federal level also? What, what can be done at this point in time? I think it's um, it's 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 simple and complex at the same time. Yes. As a people, I don't believe we have we understand the roles of each tier of government, and so you would find that typically when we discuss issues, we mention the president. Sometimes we mention a governor and that's it. Um, as a people, we've not been indoctrinated and it's not part of our culture to hold leadership accountable. So at local government level, even when you look at the statistics of elections, you look at um, the state governor elections, the number of registered voters versus those that voted for him, you find it's a small percentage. Then you go down to the local government elections, you would see a local government the size like maybe an Ikeja or a Tiosa, and the winner got 12,000 votes. You find that people are not even aware when the elections happen because we're very removed. We, as a people, we don't understand or appreciate the structure of governance that we have written into our constitution. And so where the people are really those to hold government accountable. The people are not in tune, in touch, aware of, or concerned with government at the local government level, which is why the governor can do this. If the president attempted what the attempted on the state governors, what the state governors do on the local governments, there'll be an uproar. But we, the people, are not in touch. When you ask the average Nigerian, who's your local government chairman? Who are, um, you're going to, you're going to struggle yeah. to get. In fact, some people don't even know their local government where they live. It's that. So it's it's not. Um, no matter what you pass into law, if it's not part of the culture of the people, enforcing it or living by it will still be very big difficulty. Evans, any thoughts on this? Yes, I, I think it, it's coming also from the effect of the lack of uh, uh, proper federal arrangements. You see, when the local governments are seen as an appendage of the states. Is because of our uh, a lack of understanding of the federal true federal structure. But that is what is obtainable. Let, 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 let me give you an country. example for it. Let me give you an example. You see the the Papa Wolf now the seaport. Uh, let's let's imagine if that seaport is being run by a Papa local government. That place will be like New York or better. But the, the, the all the resources from there is taken to the federal government. And the federal government have no competence on what goes on in that area. You have a lock jam there. So we need to, we need to decentralize power and allow people to manage their resources in their different circle and have proper way of creating boundaries and collection of revenue and tax. In that way, that is how it's done all over the world mm. where you have federalism. But here we are playing with everything. We don't care how we were governed. First of all, the average Nigeria has given up on the system. And then the people, the, the government, is everything, everything looks convoluted. And there's a lot of confusion all over the place. So I think we must go back to look at the constitution. Think of the constitution. Let's devolve power. That is the solution to our problem. Interesting, you made mention of us going back to the constitution because many people have blamed the 99 constitution as, as the bane of the majority of our problems. And as they've called for the they've called for the amendment of the 99 constitution. Do, do you share in that thought? And many people actually blame the 99 constitution for the, the root cause of the, the corruption that has bedeviled the nation all this while. Um, 
you, you, you talk with that, you talk with that, that um, <laughs> yeah. you, you want to say something? I've heard the argument a yes. lot. And before the 1999 constitution, Nigeria was not perfect. So is the 1999 constitution an issue? Absolutely. Is fixing that going to suddenly make Nigeria paradise? Absolutely not. We have a myriad of issues that stem from a myriad of issues. Is the constitution one of them? Yes. Uh, for a constitution to have the power to change the culture of a people, you must have rule of law, you must have adequate law enforcement, because when people go against the constitution, there must be a method to draw them back, and that is rule of law. We don't have that. The constitution will not create rule of law. The constitution will give rule of law the power to operate. Law enforcement will therefore use that power to address those issues and enforce and the first, law. Yes. If you fix the constitution, and let's assume you fix the constitution today, fixing the constitution does not fix the deficiencies in the police. And so if the police continue doing exactly what they are doing today, the constitution doesn't resolve that problem. Let's look at revenue structure. The revenue structure is, if we, if we tell states, generate your own revenue, and that's what federalism is, generate your own, control your own resources, does that automatically give the governors the competence to do it? It does not. So what you're going to have is, if you don't deal with the issues on which the Constitution enhances the issue, changing the Constitution would be great, but it's like changing the prescription so someone is sick and taking medication and the prescription is inadequate. Changing the prescription without ensuring the person adheres to it is not going to change very much. But the constitution itself is a major, major issue. There is no doubt about it. All right. Zeal Akara Iwade, political analyst and Evans Ufeli, legal practitioner, thank you for your thoughts and in-depth analysis on today's show. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take our plus report now. And when we return, I'll give you my take. Do stay with us. The United Nations Institute for Training and Research, UNITAR, has taxed ministries, departments and agencies to improve on the quality of leadership. The country director of UNITAR, Dr. Lawrence Baum, while speaking to newsmen in Abuja during a collaborative leadership seminar, said UNITAR is committed to helping the agencies achieve their desired objectives in line with the goals of the SDGs. Dr. Baum said the need for heads of agencies and stakeholders to cooperate is necessary for Nigeria's development. We try to invite, you know, government and the but uh, oftentimes they can't sit in one room, you know, to address issues and so on. That's why we think, you know, it's very, very important we understand that um, uh, uh, leadership is not just about, you know, keeping your budget, procurement and, and, and so on, and the running an agency is not about procurement and so on, it's about mm -hmm. identifying synergies that are, exist in other India. I think perhaps many people don't know that what they are doing is not collaborative leadership, and those who have already begun to do some kind of collaboration will expand their spaces and uh, bring in more people into, into the discussion. At the end of this, we should have enhanced our understanding, not only of how to go forward, but even of the problems and challenges that we may not have known about, so that when we meet them, we would be able to summon them. If we're all able to learn how to, to collaborate and work as a body, by the end of the day, I think our productivity will be more beneficial to all. So I want to learn the new intricacies and then you know how to so I'll take it back to my department and then put it across to my management and we'll take it up from there. And here is my take. Uh, it is clear to see that Bola Tinubu actually applied diplomacy in speaking out. Now, he criticized the Southwest governors for the controversy over the initiative and is also of the opinion that the AGF Abubakar Kamala Miesian is a human and stands on Amote Kun and was understandable as he had not been involved in the planning of the initiative. Now, this is probably not the statement people expected from a leader like Tinubu as the statement didn't add anything tangible to the issue. I believe he spoke so that people will stop asking him to speak out. Now, he didn't speak as a Yoruba leader like many people expected. He spoke as someone in bed with the administration of Mama Dubari as being alleged. And AGF Malami needs to understand that he is not to court. 
He's not empowered by the law to make a decision concerning both Amotekun and the local government councils. And I am of the opinion that the Attorney General's request of Mackinday is a legal blunder and he has no right to talk about a case that is still in court. So he should wait for the ruling of the court on the issue. And if the court decides at the end of the day that Mackinday should reinstate them, then all efforts should be geared towards making sure that happens. For now, Malami should be careful not to thwart the course of justice with his needless statement. That's my take on tonight's issues. Thank you for staying with us. More interesting conversations to be had same time tomorrow. Have a good evening.